Uh, we did the wind tunnel test, and the results were phenomenal. Uh, they were better than we thought, which is which is great. You know, I mean, we were surprised just how good it was, and that's great. I mean, you hope, uh, you know, aerodynamics is a bit of a black art. There's a couple, let's say, laws that you know. That you know, you know, you want to square up the bodywork with the wheels. You, you know, you, if you can have a flat floor, that's ideal. You know, there's a certain tangent from the, the roof to the rear spoiler that you need to make sure you have that the air reattaches because as rear, as air goes over the roof, it starts to lose velocity, and then it becomes turbulent, and so then it has to reattach because if it doesn't reattach, then it creates lift. You know, as I said in Formula One, they they continually discover because they really literally develop the aerodynamics of a car over the course of a year. Uh, you know, obviously in production car design. And, and even a car like this, a special car, a one-off car, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, there's not a year of time to develop the aerodynamics. I mean, it's got to work right away. And then, you know, you hope to optimize it, you know, within a, within a span of a few days. Because I'm not going to lie, aerodynamic testing is pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and it's time-consuming, of course, because, you know, you're in there, you know, for a few days. But... Um, the, the aerodynamic performance was really exceptional. We were really proud of it. We're really happy with it because we were able to cut the drag really significantly and actually increase the downforce. So we can have our cake and eat it too. So the car will actually, in theory, and I know this is going to sound corny, but it's actually going to consume a lot less gas. <laughs> it's it's going to be sustainable. You know, the key buzzword of the moment, particularly for uh, big engine cars and sports cars. So... Uh, you know the the, the the CD the the drag coefficient is is very impressive for the, particularly for the size of the car and the type of the car, because at the end of the day the, the the sports car shape has certain things that go against it such as exceptionally large tires which do create a lot of drag, uh, the necessity to get air in and out of the car and that creates drag and that's something that people don't realize you know when you have a let's say a mono volume, a minivan or something, you basically have an egg shape and it's much easier to create, you know, with little tiny bicycle tires on it. So of course that object doesn't have a lot of drag. Uh, so air, you know, the aerodynamics of a sports car are much more complex uh, because there's thermal efficiency, there's downforce to worry about. You know, a lot of things that you can do to create downforce create drag. So you have to find the balance. You know, how do we get the right level of downforce without creating too much drag? And so these are always trade-offs that you make. And, you know, I mean, sometimes you can say, well, you know, for, for true race cars, they don't worry so much about drag because at the end of the day, the cars have so much horsepower that they're able to compensate for the, for the drag that they create tenfold. Uh, what they need is downforce above all. Obviously, they still want to be as efficient as possible with that downforce to drag ratio. But, you, you know, I mean, if they have to give more angle of attack on the wing or a larger wing, they'll do it because what's most important is the speed they're going to make up braking and in corners and accelerating out of corners than the straights, you know, where... That's when a very slippery car, you know, on a long enough straight will start to pull away from another car. Uh, so in a road car, though, and, and this is, you know, obviously a very track-oriented road car, it's all about creating the best aerodynamic balance, meaning that you want to have, uh, let's say, a near 50-50 aerodynamic balance from front to rear in the car because that's what's going to give you completely neutral handling characteristics. So just as much as weight distribution as well. If anything, you want a little more, being that this is a... Uh, a high performance car, a little more downforce in the rear, um, but you know, also same, a little more weight in the rear because that will help your, your traction in and out of corners in particular. So uh, we were able to achieve a, a very low drag. We were able to increase the downforce of the original car, and additionally, we were able to create a 50-50 balance of aerodynamics. So you know, we clicked all the boxes. We, we, we were very lucky.